Hi everybody. In this video, we'll be continuing our exploration of PostgreSQL and that Python adapter. I'm going to give you some hints, talk about some common errors, and tell you about bad practices to avoid. So let's get started. Just get in the terminal here, fire up the Python interpreter, and talk about kind of review stuff we know about Python and especially with Python strings. So here I have this friend Anne. Her location is Boston. And here's something we can do in almost every language. We can do string substitution or replacement here, where I can go this percent %s, which is a string that has some, we know that it's going to get replaced with some string, lives in percent %s. So that's the string. Now I'm going to put in the connector, the percent, and this is going to be the tuple of the arguments that these these things will get replaced with. So I'll go friend lock. Not very surprising. It doesn't have to be variables. It can be direct strings. It can be whatever we want, really. And you'd think you could do something like this, and you can. So we can just do one with a single argument. I like percent %s percent and then I'll just say friend. That looks good. And now I'll do one, let me just up arrow here. To get rid of the parentheses. And that works too. So with one argument, I don't need these parentheses. Now this is hiding, or at least a little bit hiding, something that we really need to be aware of when we're using Postgres. And it's this. So I can have, create a tuple in Python like this. And this looks similar, but it doesn't create a tuple. It just gives us back that string friend. So now D refers to a string, not a tuple containing one element that's a string. Similarly, if I had a number in here, D is that number, not a tuple containing that number. To get what we want, a, a tuple of length 1 containing the string and, we need to do something like this, or exactly this. We put in a comma. It can be immediately after. Now we have a tuple containing one element. So the one element equivalent of this is not what you'd think, this, but you will need to do add that comma. This ends up being very important, as we'll see shortly. Finally, just another review, we can concatenate strings together. I like, uh, let's just say friend here. So all these are very common ways of doing it in languages, including Python, but it's not, none of these is what we use when we want to do substitutions with that Postgres adapter. Let me just show you in server py here in music 3 where we did that insert here's this current cur the cursor execute expression and cur execute takes two arguments one is the string and the second is the list of arguments that will get replaced in the string so the cursor itself does the substitution it doesn't use any of the methods we've just seen I'm going to simplify this a bit just so we see these differences and switch to this demo code I created. So here I import the library. Here's my code for connecting to the database like we did before. I make that connection. I get the cursor, get some strings, and whoops, let me get this here. So this cur cursor modify is a very useful function or method of the cursor. And what Mogrify does is exactly like execute, except where execute sends queries to the database server, it, it constructs queries and sends them to the database server. Cur Mogrify constructs queries and just gives us the string that it constructs. So it's useful if we want to see 
what we're actually sending to the database server. So we can use this, print it, and see, oh, that's the select statement. I made some error. You know, I intended it to be something else. Or it'll print something. I can actually copy that and paste it into PSQL and see if I get the results I want. So it's a really extremely useful way of debugging what, what's going on. So here I use it very simple, simply, just like in execute, it takes two arguments. This one here is the string, and this is the terms that this is that are going to be replaced in it. So let me just run that code. So I'm going to exit out of Python. I'm going to execute the demo. And I get what I want. I have X and Y here just in order to get all this fitting without having to do any scrolling. So Y is in single quotes. And that, as we learned, is exactly how we want uh, SQL wants these arguments in, within single quotes. So that looks good. Let's look at using Chris O'Reilly as an argument here. And this works fine. So having two quotes in succession it escapes that single quote, indicating that it doesn't end the quoted string. It's just uh, literally a one quote in it. So if we pasted this into PSQL, it would work perfectly fine. So this escapes that single quote. It, it's this Mogrify works correctly in its substitution. Okay, let me copy this. Do something a little easier here. Let's just get rid of one argument. So let's just say I'm interested in giving me all the entries where y equals Taylor Swift. So that'll be here. Right, and you can take a look at that just to verify that I did it correctly. I just got rid of this one replacement here. This would be like where uh, y is Taylor Swift and z is 1989. This is just going to be where y equals Taylor Swift. Let me comment this out. Okay, now I'm going to run this. And I get this error. Type error, not all arguments converted during string format. And the reason this is very confusing and can take a long time to figure out what the problem is, but the problem is the one we just talked about, that term one here with um, no comma at the end is not a tuple, right? We want to have that comma there. Let me try that. And that works perfectly fine. So. I don't know how many hours I spent once trying to debug what I had wrong. It was simply missing what looks perfectly fine and legitimate, but was missing that comma. Let's try something else here. Let's um, So that looks great. Let's alter things a bit. So this first one was, is using Mogrify to do this connect, this substitution. Let's just have Python do it by having that percent like we've seen before. There it is. The first one is having Mogrify or the cursor object doing the substitution. The second one is having uh, Python itself with string substitution. And it's pretty good. The problem is we don't have single quotes around here, so apparently Mogrify puts the quotes for us. So if we wanted to do this in Python, we would have to do that. Put quotes around the object. I'm going to run it. And we have identical queries. So for most cases, these are, would be identical approaches. Up here, these are, seem to be identical results. We could put in whoever we want and we'd get these same results. The problem comes in here, Chris, the Chris O'Reilly case. So you see Mogrify is smart and escapes the single quote. The Python substitution is not so smart, doesn't escape the single quote. If we sent this to Postgres, it would create a problem, right? We get to the end of the string right here at the that segment, and then we have some leftover bit that we have no clue what to do with. And a malicious person could do maybe something like this. So 
So I'm assuming people are typing stuff into a, a search box. So all this is fine, it's escape. This is what the cursor object does, no problem. Here we have a problem. This is called SQL injection, where a person could possibly do something very bad to our database server, like in this example, drop the entire database music. Let's try a few others that don't. So this does not look like a good approach. Right, we want to have Mogrify itself or the cursor object itself do the substitution. Let's just hammer that home by looking at a few more examples. Okay, that looks good. And let me just do another one here. Whoops, I didn't put the single quotes in here like I should have. I'm going to end the string. I'm going to concatenate term three. And now I'm going to add that closing quote. And let's give this a shot. Curb. So and let me just comment these out so we don't need to look at them anymore. Oh, it also helps to close these up. All right, I think that might be good syntax. So again, we have this problem where it doesn't um, escape the single quote. So these are not good. All right, so let me show you how this actually works and what, what problems it creates in our real code. So music four I have here, I've created. Well, let me just show you the, whoops, let me make sure I'm running here. I think I am. And let me get the address, maybe. There we go. Okay, the alien abduction sounds good. And now I'm going to go to, I think it's music four. And here I have brought, put, made a little search box, which I'll show you in a second. And I can search for Taylor Swift. And I get the Taylor Swift album. And I can search for Chris. Let me just select that one. Chris O'Reilly. Works perfectly fine. And how I did that was here. Is my the code that's relevant, and you see I'm you I'm having the cursor object itself do the substitution, right? There's two arguments here to cursor. One's the string, one's the search term. Again, this is a problem because we shouldn't let whatever a user types into a search box or any input field sent directly to the database. So here we're letting the cursor object take care of that, escaping things, protecting us from these sorts of problems. So music five is the same, except instead of the comma, I have the percent here, meaning Python's going to do the substitution. So let me go to music five up here. I type in Taylor Swift. And I get some error. Why did I get an error? Well, let's take a look. Oops, wrong server. So I got an error here 
because I don't have quotes around the string, single quotes. How would I know that? Instead of doing this thing, which is not the best way to do it, I can do curmography. It would give me the same result there. So let's give, see if that improves things. Oops, I bombed out completely there, didn't I? There, so that single quote was the problem. Let me put in curmography here just to show you that. Oops, that should be here. Print. And it would just be this. Didn't do enough. And let me actually not print the query the other way. So now I'm printing out exactly what it's I'm sending off to the database. So if I didn't have those quotes there, let me just show you that part again. And that was true here too. That was my original code. Now if I ran it, I get that error. Now I get a little feedback of why that error is because I can look back here, find that select statement that I printed out right here. And if I didn't even know why that was a problem, I would paste it into PSQL and it might give me some additional feedback. But I can see I don't have the single quotes here and that's why I needed them there. So let me get back to those single quotes. Get the Mogrify as well. Hopefully that solved that problem. Let me run this again. So I got Taylor Swift and now if I try Chris O'Reilly I get an error and that's because of that escape character. So this is the problem of the hyphen in there. I'm not protecting the code. So this is not a good approach to use. The not good approach means and have a percent there instead of the correct comma. I think I have one more example here. And here's where what looks like a good idea, which is generate create the query before passing it off to the execute command. But it's the same problem. You see I have that percent there that's going to screw us up. So let me do that one. Okay, the Taylor Swift should work, hopefully. Works perfectly fine. So 90% of the time, all this stuff will look like it's perfect, but um, sometimes it will crash. And you'll wonder why, what did I do wrong? It seems to work perfectly almost all the time, but occasionally it, it doesn't work. And I get that error again. So you see that using Python basic string substitutions is not a good idea. It's going to create problems and it could possibly create problems, just security issues, because people can try X SQL injection, meaning that they're trying to execute some code that's un unintended by you in on the database server. So it can really be a fatal error that you're making. So that's it. I just wanted to mention those few things. Hope you found this helpful.